we're on the set with Lucia. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so we were talking, you know, before we came on about that I spent some time in Esalen. What was it like growing up there for you? And was it just like home because it's such a, you know, interesting, amazing, powerful place? Yeah, it was, it was home and it was what was natural and it was my real world. So many people come to Esalen and they ask me, how, how did it go, you know, go into the real world and for me, it was the real world, and it still is in many ways. And as a child, it was a very idyllic place to grow up. There were a lot more kids there at Esalen then, and we did grow up around a lot of adults and a lot of teachers, a lot of radical thinkers. But we were in a safe place, and we had the Gazebo School, Janet Letterman's school, and that was a place where all of the kids would meet, and it was a preschool, and it was very idyllic, where we kind of had to run wherever we wanted to go. So I, I think and it's it, in a beautiful place on the coast of Big Sur. And yeah. So yeah, the ocean right there. Yeah, everything, everything is there. the The land is full in Esalen, where I was born, and my sister and I, both being born there, always have felt very strongly that that's it's a place like it feels like God's altar there, Esalen a place where people have come for thousands of years to healing, for healing. And so I think we both felt very blessed and, and feel very blessed to have grown up there. When we were teenagers, it definitely changed. <laughs> so then that, of course, and being a teenager and the awkwardness of that, just wanting to have a normalcy. And, and so things were a little bit more of a struggle. But as we grew older, we have all the children in our family, my sister Jasmine and my brother and I, have all returned back to Esalen. My sister is a, a, a teacher at the Gazebo School now, and both my brother and I teach Five Rhythms there at Esalen. And how did you get into Five Rhythms? I was talking about your relationship with Gabrielle, and she was the founder. Why don't you talk about that and you know, how you started to know that that was really the fire and the passion and, the, mm -hmm. in a way, the destiny of your life in that way? Well, as you said in the beginning, really, I was born into this practice, so... Uh, Esalen Massage and Five Rhythms were in our blood and in my blood. And as a, a young child, we were always around a lot of dancing and drumming and music. And Gabrielle was developing her work and Esalen Massage was developing. And so we were just naturally always in and out of the room. I think I was around 12 years old when I actually went into a workshop and danced the whole workshop. Around that age, when I was trying to figure out a little bit more of who I was, I got very interested. And my mom, Peggy Haran, and Gabrielle were raised all of our ch the children together very much and gave us this knowledge. So it came from them. And when we showed interest, they allowed us to, to come more and to be more a part of it and learn more. So I was 19 when I began the teaching path and around 21 when I began actually teaching. And the skills that I learned from my family are what allowed me to put myself through college and, and with some support of uh, as much as my family could offer. But I worked really hard and, and used the skills that I had been given to put myself through school. And it was always kind of, I would say that this was, has always been a primary part of my life. And it's been more recent, in my more recent years, the last five years, where I've embraced this path fully as, as a teacher, that I am carrying a lineage and I'm carrying a responsibility of a tremendous amount of, of, of healing, which has come through the methods that I've been given by my family to share with the world. And so as the generations change hands, uh, we have a responsibility to give that also to the children that are coming now. <laughs> and so why don't you talk about five rhythms and, and the, the philosophy and the intention and just, you know, what people would like to know. Mm -hmm. When they saw they saw some of the movement, mm -hmm. and I'm sure they've heard of it in some way, but now we have somebody who could really... <laughs> okay, well, the five rhythms is a, it's a moving meditation practice. So it's an improvisational style of dance, which requires the mind to be more alert than when we're learning rote movement in an aerobics class or, a, or even a, some traditional classes where we're learning other people's movements. The Five Rhythms really is a moving meditation in the sense that we're using 
the focal point of the breath to bring us out of the chattering mind, the comparing mind, the judging mind, and bring us into a sense of mindfulness, where through the fusion of both the breath and the movement and the spirit, those three aspects, we call that like a a sacred trinity, where the breath and the movement and spirit come together. And in that, something comes alive in in the quality of the mind, can change from its critical place into a, a mindfulness where the mind is in each part of the body, this is, the, is the, the common denominator between all of the rhythms, the breath. And the breath resides in the present. It doesn't reside anywhere else. So as many meditation practices use the breath as the focal point, we can find a sense of, of, of a quieter mind, of a more peaceful mind. And for a culture that lives primarily from the shoulders up, this is uh, in teaching that is really crucial to our happiness and balance in the world. So the five rhythms as a practice and a method offers a very deep uh, philosophical background over 50 years of study and development into becoming what it is today. The map of the five rhythms, the method of the five rhythms as Gabrielle developed it was a journey that she embarked on to understand human nature. In the five rhythms, in the first map, the primary map, which maps out the rhythms and patterns and cycles of of the body and of the human nature, we begin with the rhythm of flowing, which is the rhythm of the feminine. It's the realm of receiving, of listening, of being sensitive, of being able to yield and move out of the way, of learning how to to take things in, really take things in, receive, allow. And in the dance itself, we fall into an endless continuum of movement where there are no edges, just an endless spiral of movement. And in that, we're kind of harnessing this power, the power of, of this weight of this body and putting it into motion. And in harnessing that, we, we can find this flow, this fluid nature, which is, it is who we are. We are fluid. We're not fixed beings. From flowing, we move into the second rhythm, which is the rhythm of staccato. And staccato is the rhythm of the masculine. So as flowing would be the rhythm of the inhalation, of receptivity, staccato would be the breath of the exhale, the breath of action, the breath of giving, the breath of, of direct, directness, of, of clarity. And this realm is one that we can experience through the body how to be direct in our lives, how to follow through with an idea and make it happen how to say no and be clear. And staccato is, is, is in the realm of the, of the heart, the realm of the hips. From staccato, we kind of move up the body, the wave cycles up, upwards, and we find the rhythm of, of chaos. Which chaos. Chaos, which is a, a rather, a, a word that's synonymous with being out of control in our culture. But in the dance, when we're grounded in the feet of flowing and centered in the hips of staccato, when those two energies come together, they begin a weaving process, a coming together that almost it can dissolve the opposites. And in the chaos, this friction of these the feminine masculine energies, there's a breaking open. There's there's a a release, a birth, birth, an expansion, and and it. It allows us to kind of break what's been constricting us, what's been holding us, and in that place, empty out. It is the realm of the mind. And in that dance, it's like it's hitting the peak where everything can empty out, everything that we've been holding in this body can empty out. And as a result of that, of that chaos, of the marriage of those two primary energies coming together, as a result of chaos, as a result of the unfolding, we're delivered into the stage of lyrical, the fourth rhythm. And lyrical is the place where everything begins to change, where this energy has peaked 
and and it's and it's opened and all that is that we didn't need can can be shed like skins of a serpent and what remains in its essence is lyrical the realm of the spirit the realm of prayer which holds the subtle aspects of life and that place is also the realm of the shapeshifter the person inside of me who knows how to shift from um from from teacher to student, from partner to friend, from professional to playmate. And this is a very liberating quality, a place within the, the rhythms where as we shed those skins, we can, we can be liberated and, and be recreated. So lyrical very much brings us into this realm. And it's also the realm of joy where all of that hard work and chaos can kind of, can, can be re, re, rewarded in this body. From lyrical, we're moving down the cycle of the wave and into our fifth rhythm. So lyrical delivers us into the realm of stillness. And stillness is not where the dance just ends, but it is actually a state of being. One-fifth of this experience is dancing and moving in the realm of stillness, where we're looking to embody a quality of emptiness or a quality of integration, where we can integrate our experience, all that we've been through. And in that connection, expanding the awareness beyond just myself into this field, into this group, into this world, this membrane of separateness can be pierced and we can experience, it's possible to experience a a sense of connection with myself with the people that I'm sharing in this space or with a, an intimate partner. And, and this realm is, is also the realm of death. It's a, it has a very reverent space around it. Lyrical uh, in, and stillness in the backside of that wave are, are part of the dance, which I think many times are, are given too short of time. They should be given more time, especially in our culture. <coughs> So that, that shows you the cycle of the rhythms, and we look at them as states of being. And we are exercising these states of being through the gateway of the body. By, if you would like to experience liberation, or you would like to experience freedom, or happiness, or peace, or balance in your life, we can sit in a therapist's office for a long time talking about our problems. But the body holds a whole experience of this life inside of it. And if we want to access certain, certain aspects that are, we know are possible, Gabrielle has shown us that if we use the body as a vehicle, we can open the body to these places. And then maybe the heart and the mind can also be open to those places. Uh, as we said, these are realms, they're states of being. And if we look at the patterning that we have in, 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 a, in, in your life, in my life, there tends to be a, a accentuation on one aspect or another. That you may be a very well-organized person, a very well-planned person, you know how to make things happen. That's a very staccato-like quality, which may dominate your personality. But what happens when you charge into a room and you're not being sensitive to anyone? So it shows us that by dancing these dances, accessing all of these states of being, we're exercising these the state of being within the heart, within the mind, within the body, and becoming more flexible to the range of possibilities and levels of presence that we can experience with ourselves and with others. Most people associate dance, if they're not a professional dancer or they're not a uh, a student of dance, which comprises a very small percentage of the world, most other people associate dance with alcohol and drugs. And that I, a uh, majority of people need to have a drink to let down their inhibitions and be able to, to really dance. And in the five rhythms, the one scary thing for many people is to come to the dance sober. That in my sobriety, I reveal what is real, what is raw, what is authentic in me. 
And that dancing, these dances, can bring that authenticity to the surface. And all of the conditionings which have stopped us and held us and told us, don't do this, don't dance like that, because you'll be labeled as, as this or the other thing, can, can disappear. And we can really shine as individuals and share our love with the world, to receive as much as we can and give as much as we can. And in essence, I think that's what it's all about. If there was a goal, we in this age, as people search for connection in religion and spirituality and try on different gurus, but how often does one bow to one's own body to respect this place as a temple and to let this be the vehicle to receive God within? We would hope more and more, huh? <laughs> Well, certainly through the movement of dance, which is the interesting time that we're in. That there well, it would probably be the openness of heart as well, and there are a lot of ways, you know, that yeah. how can we all together, you know, we talk about it as like kind of raising the quantum energy so that that energy of openness, that energy of harmony, the way you talked about it, all the harmonies and the, the balancing of male and female, and, yes. you know, really starts to happen over and over again. And we're going to show the second video and then we'll come back and talk about the, uh, the non-profit that Gabriel set up that you know, goes all over the world and all. Why don't you talk about the dolphin video and your experience of that and you'll set that up for us because they're going to show the dolphin video right now. Okay, great. Uh, my connection with the dolphins has been a lifelong adventure that began when I was five years old, the first time I swam with dolphins, and it was the only time I've ever swam with them in captivity. And I have swam with the dolphins in the wild as a surfer and as a lover of the ocean all over the world. In, 19, uh, in 2000, I went to uh, the Bahamas, to Bimini, and I worked for Wild Quest there as a, as a diver and I taught, mas did massage and taught dance as well. And I really just went there to live and be with the dolphins and have a different experience. And from that experience, it inspired me to return again and again and bring people to dance five rhythms each day and then to swim in the ocean with the dolphins. This year, our, our theme of the workshop was was the human dolphin connection and we had three words that opened this this experience for people and those three words were relax allow and receive so once they got in the water they can relax allow to for this experience to happen and the experience to come to receive and take that in and this is really one of the crown jewels of my, ex my offerings in the world at this point. I, I love to be with them. I've received the most healing in my life from being with them. So I share it with others. Right. And it's really a beautiful video. Enjoy.
You want to talk about like the effect of these things and how people from all different races, religion, cultures, when they start doing the five rhythms, they become one in a way. So why don't you talk to that a little bit? Okay. Well, one of the things that I've been fortunate enough to experience in working with this method is that many people come into my rooms and I don't know what their background is, but I look around the room and I can see that there are people who come from all over the world. They don't speak the same language. They don't bow to the same God. They don't have the same color skin. And all of the normal things that divide people 
in fact, the way that the Western mind is kind of divided is melted through the dance and through the language of movement. That when we engage in a, this level of communication between two people, that I don't need to speak your language to understand what you're moving through, to see the sadness that you're carrying, to see the joy that you're displaying. And this melts so many aspects of division and allows us to come together and to see each other as citizens of this earth, of this planet, not as different, but as the same. And that power to transform ideas and concepts that have kept so many people at a distance. You're a Jew and I'm a Christian. I'm a, you know, Indian and you're a Buddhist. And so these kinds of things, when we dance, all begin to melt. And in the dance, all is held. Whatever we're going through shows up there. Whatever we're moving through in our life. In my own life, the dance has held me through many things, and it's been a, a place where my family has celebrated um, so many weddings and joyous and beautiful occasions, as well as deaths and losses that we've experienced in our life and in our tribe. And returning to the dance uh, is, to me, is the biggest gift. It is its home. And if more people in the world could see each other as the same and not different, I think we would be living in a very different situation than we are. The exciting thing that's happening right now is that dance is on the forefront of, of what we could call a movement. There is a dance movement that is happening. And that movement is still in its young stages as yoga was 25 years ago in the United States. Now you say the word yoga and everyone knows what you're talking about you know, for the most part, and yoga is a multi-billion dollar industry in the U.S. Dance, in, in this conscious dance, we could say, as an umbrella term for many disciplines of dance, was uh, this movement was really began by Gabrielle Roth, by Bonnie Bainbridge-Cohen and Anna Helprin, and they were the grandmothers of this great movement, which is happening right now, which excites me to be a part of a young person in the world right now, um, to be a part of that and to be able to spread the knowledge that we were given to those who need it most. To empty out what is in our bones, what we've carried. Ida Rolf said a very beautiful thing. She said she's the founder of Rolfing, and uh, a form of body work also that came out of Esalen. And she said, you know, the issues are in your tissues. And Gabrielle spoke this same language, saying, the body doesn't lie. What is happening here? Become fascinated with what's happening here. And so we can empty out the channel, of, uh, empty out this body of all we don't need to carry anymore from our past. And the dance and the cycle of the rhythms takes us through this experience so that we can not be tinted all the time, not see the present moment tinted all the time by the past, but see this present moment for what it is, and hopefully to take pleasure and joy and find some balance in, in our own lives and who we are. And in just helping ourselves, we can help so many other people. And as many Five Rhythms teachers have healed their own wounds around abuse or alcohol or addiction or these kinds of things, they've gone back to, to reach out and to become of service to others that, have, that are going through what they're going through the kinds of loss or the kinds of challenges. And that's where I think where our five rhythms reach out to Gabrielle Roth's nonprofit organization, which is um, 5RRO.com. And uh, that is the seed of her vision of the future, the place where all of the people that would find themselves in the work in, the, in a five rhythms dance class who experience a workshop or a class and have been moved or healed or touched in some way can go to the Five Rhythms Reach Out and to donate $5 or what they would spend on a workshop and give back to those who would never normally find themselves in a class like that. And through the Five Rhythms Reach Out, we are going into um, war-torn areas, into places where, into orphanages, working with children who have lost their parents in the United States, working with aut autistic kids, um, Alzheimer's and uh, elderly patients in jails, 
uh, with battered women, with all kinds of, of demographics really across the board, but reaching out with this, this nonprofit to, to really bring this work to people who need it the most and who would never normally find it. Find it. So that is a, a vision that I, I hope will carry us forward into many generations so that the dance can be given back. One of the, the, the things that we're finding through the scientific research now of people like uh, Basil van der Kolk, who does uh, research on the brain working with um, PTSD and trauma, and people like uh, Peter Levine, who work with PTSD and trauma with war veterans and um, such like this, that we're, we're finding that these scientific studies have substantiated the body of work of of the five rhythms. Gabrielle's work has now been validated by science to say this is not just some esoteric thing, this is actually a way that we're treating people who have dealt with very traumatic situations in their life and who are having incredible difficulty reintegrating into having a normal life or functioning in the world. And so as we dance and over a lifetime of doing this work, I've seen and experienced in my own life how to, I've come from a very fragmented and, and, and incredibly intense situation and, and been able to find the pieces again. And I see that over and over and over again with people that are in this work. So it, it is needed everywhere in the world and I hope that we can continue to, to share this in the, in the name of unity, in the name of love. That's beautiful. Yeah, in the name of love, be good, right? <laughs> and and what is what are you seeing is that more people all over the world are receptive to it and open to it and I think people are asking for it. When I began to teach I, I developed a little motto for myself which was to, to only go to where pe to places where people invited me. And when they asked for my advice or they asked to know something that I would share everything I could with them. So this is, this is, we find ourselves now receiving more invitations than we can take because so many people wish for us to come and to share this work. So we work together as a team. We have uh, 400 teachers around the world now. And so sometimes we're invited to, to places and we defer work to, to other people. In New York City where we teach our classes at the Joffrey Ballet School, when one of us is traveling and teaching, uh, the others support the whole system. And my partner Douglas Drummond and I have this uh, a very strong team there in New York uh, along with my brother and Tammy Bernstein, Peter Federa, Gabrielle, and, and many others. But it's, it's, it's beautiful to work together, you know, to, to continue to, to, to give this and hope that those who follow in our footsteps will carry it with even more grace than we have. But and we're, you're not done yet. No, <laughs> and I still got some years right. to go. And I think, you know, we're all born to move. And no matter what your capacity, you know, with people in wheelchairs, we teach this work. And it's, it's quite phenomenal to see the joy that comes from moving, even at whatever capacity that you are, that this movement can always be here. And the sound of, of music is so powerful. It's music as medicine, you know, dance as medicine. And we bring the dances that mean the most to us in our lives. When we go through big things, it's easy to, to get attached to one thing or one field, one feeling in life. But when change comes, it's very challenging for most people. And so we practice the art of change. We're in an impermanent situation in this life, very delicate situation, a half a breath from death at any moment. And so to live life fully, to take care of the things we need to take care of, our elders, our young people, to say our goodbyes, tell the people we love we love them, you know, to dance all of this, to bring our divorces, our deaths, our births, our celebration into the dance. It makes them alive. It makes it real. And this is what people have done for thousands of years. We're just remembering. And through the seed of Gabrielle's work, reweaving this beautiful golden thread back into our culture which has lost something. And so many people in this time so disillusioned by the dogmas of, of religion. And as Gabrielle says, 
there is no dogma in the dance. There is no dogma in the dance. And I become an authority of my own body, not give it that power away to everyone else. And so there is this deep sense of spirituality which is harnessed by the breath and body that is spirit alive in motion, practicing the art of impermanence at every second as everything in this body changes and moves and allows for that very authentic self to shine through from that place. Well, you could really talk about it if you were impassionate. No, I was going to say, you do it pretty <laughs> well, amazing. I no, think so beautiful. many people who have been disillusioned by the, the dogmas and structures around religion are searching for a sense of, of connection to spirituality. And without to, words. Without having to sit right. down on a couch and talk about it or confess a sin that that this this body is a vehicle to experience God. It's within inside. And it's it connects right the heaven right. and earth just as you speak about on your show. In the crown of my head I receive God, I receive heaven. In the soles of my feet I feel the earth. I connect this earth. This body is a vehicle, a bridge between both of those worlds. How could it be otherwise? Yeah. And that this right. is this is it. when we can clear the channels which kind of clog the flute of the body from playing its music and expressing its joy. When we can unclog those stuck places in our life, those past hurts, those wounds, the things we blame others for, and we can begin to forgive and accept, then this body and this vessel can be something with a great sound. Can, can travel through a great music, a great harmony can travel. And in that moment, I become a vessel. I'm out of the way, my mind is out of the way, and something can come through me which needs to be given to the world. So I look very much to my work as a, as a mediumship in a way. that Something is coming from the divine. It is the dance. It's not me, it's not my ego, it's not my body. It's, I am not this. Something is larger passing through. And Gabriel speaks of this as the silver desert, the zone. It doesn't matter if you're a golfer, you're a basketball player, a painter, a composer, or a businessman, a Wall Street banker. We're all looking for the place where of no mind, where we're not thinking, but the brilliance comes through. The yeah. essence, yeah. the heart, the love, yeah. 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 And you can shoot every basket and, you know. <laughs> right. So, I, when we look at these, the artwork that you guys are showing, you can see another example of the rhythms. When one receives an idea, and this also ties into the sense of mediumship, that something is coming from our ancestors or our, uh, spirits or our angels, whatever you name it as, God, love. But there's an idea which is received, a vision which is received, and that is flowing to receive a vision. Staccato is to put it into action, to paint, to make that real. Chaos is to surrender to this, which we don't know how it's going to come out. It's a mystery what will be created. So I surrender, and that is chaos. And when I stand back from this, I see this painting, this paper, this canvas has been transformed, lyrical, the fourth rhythm. And then I stand when I know it's finished in stillness to see a whole cycle of creativity, a map of creativity, just like a wave breaking. It rolls towards the sea in a swell. It hits the shelf in staccato, juts out in chaos, transforms in lyrical, Apervescence rise in stillness, the wave returns to the oneness of the sea. This is something natural. This is something that's inside of us and outside of us. It's not a religion or a philosophy we have to fit ourselves into. It's just happening. It's happening. It's, it's love. Yeah. <laughs> it's rose at the end of this show, which is amazing. It's very love.